Welcome to Public Finance in Canada. I am Keith Kucha, and in this video, we're just going to be taking a look through our D2L site, an overview of the course site, uh, where to find all the stuff, what the expectations are for the semester, and just to kind of be able to navigate and find a way to organize yourself as we carry on. So let's jump over to D2L. Let's start off by taking a look at that, and we'll talk and take a look at everything as we go. Okay, so as you navigate to D2L, this is your main kind of landing page. Right here up front is our welcome. This is our new site. This is where anything that is of importance or relevance to the course will get posted as we carry on. Uh, my primary form, my primary method of communication to you is through this new site. So be sure to check here frequently in order to see what's going on. For the most part, everything that is covered in this video is just laid out in this wall of text of the introduction, so you're free to read it or, of course, as you're already watching the video, to continue to watch. That is all available to you. Uh, what else do we have? Navigating the front page, we have on the right side here the instructor information, so there is myself, uh, email, and then as well we have the social media link, that's to the departmental LinkedIn and Facebook site. So if you want to stay in contact and connect with us even beyond uh, completion of this course, feel free to join either that LinkedIn or the Facebook group. Uh, on this we post just a lot of interesting things, uh, relevance of what's happening in the news, current events in the world around us, and a bit of discussion around that. As well, it's a great way to stay in touch about different events that the economics department might be holding. Uh, yeah. Carrying down, uh, nothing really too exciting. We just have a bit of a quote there. And then the calendar of when events are due as we carry forward. From here, one of the big areas you're going to want to navigate to, this is probably your one-stop shop, is right there up on the toolbar, the checklist. So if we navigate to this checklist, we'll see, well, we're on a seven-week course, and we have weeks one through seven laid out before us. Uh, this checklist is everything that is expected of you throughout the week. So if you're like, oh no, did I miss something? Is something due? I don't know where I need to go through as we get through this course. Everything is here in the checklist. And everything in the checklist hyperlinks to everything you need. So if there's only one place you go beyond that front page, this would be it. To take a look at week one, we have intro enroll to government. So that opens up as a new window there for us. And we see, hey, we have watched the welcome video. Oh, well, you're doing that right now. So great. Uh, beyond that, we have read the syllabus. We'll go and take a look at where that is. Uh, by the time you have access to this, both that welcome video and the syllabus will be hyperlinked in this checklist. We have uh, post an introduction to the discussion, discussion board. We'll uh, jump over and take a look at that shortly, as well as watch the lecture videos. So I want to just uh, put in here, We've gone, I guess, I've gone and created a textbook for this course to uh, save you a bit of money if I'm going to go out and uh, buy one. Uh, so with that being said, is for each week, you have the option to either read the section text or watch the corresponding videos. It's the same content covered in each one. Uh, they're just provided for you based off of your learning style. As of recording this welcome video, at least, this textbook has been written, uh, might be a bit of typos. It was a quick and a dirty job to get that done. So if you do come across any errors or anything that's awkwardly phrased or uncertain, please let me know and I can update it. These videos, these videos are still a work in progress. Uh, the idea of them is just to provide that alternative learning medium in case just reading a wall of text is not your thing. Uh, my hope, my intent is to kind of keep these one week ahead. So here we are week one and your week one videos are posted. As you're watching and working through week one, I will be working and getting through your week two videos to get them posted and prepared for you. Uh, we can just close this guy here. Of course, if you check them off as you go through, it saves those for you to say, hey, yes, you actually did those activities. And once you hit save, it updates and we can close the window and it doesn't update because I'm just pretending to be a student, but it would say, hey, items complete five out of five. Yeah. Same can be said for all seven weeks. Uh, the different exception being is that some of the weeks have extra things that take place in them. And again, everything is linked directly through that checklist. 
Let's uh, continue through our navigation just through this top toolbar and let's take a look at our discussions. Okay, so what I usually like to start off is initially, you'll probably start off like this where all the forms are open. I like to start off with having them all collapsed just so that it's easy to navigate through and find the one. Uh, what we have is really a few, four forms altogether that you're going to be able to navigate to. First one is just questions and points of interest. So for this form, this is just, hey, you have a general question about the course or content, or just, hey, I found something of interesting uh, that I think would be relevant to the course, you can post it here. This is kind of a frequently asked questions or just a common place to post uh, things of interest. Carrying on, we get into our graded areas. Uh, here we have our weekly discussions. And in this here, it's more or less for participation grades. Uh, that is, if you post and thoughtful response and you respond to another student, you're more or less guaranteed to get full marks for it. There is a rubric attached for this discussion, which I'll show you how to find shortly. And that's really how I'm marking it. But essentially, unless you're completely trying to avoid work, if you had a thoughtful response and you responded to another student, you're getting full marks. If we click on that, we see that, hey, the first one is just to create a brief bio for yourself, post a bit of an introduction. Nice, easy, week one, post your introduction, respond to another student, great, you get your first bit of mark. As we carry forward, every week we'll have more and more to talk about. In week two, we're gonna talk about the role and size of government, which is what week one's content was, and we'll carry on in this fashion throughout the semester. So week three, week four, uh, week four, I kind of jump over. You don't need to post one there. We do have a project that takes place that at least start to be due at that point. So I kind of omit this discussion to give you a bit more time and freedom to work on that project. And then we carry forward week five, week six, and we wrap up in week seven. So that's there, free for you to navigate, free for you to take a look at. Uh, let's go and minimize this guy again, just so that we can rapidly carry on through the rest. Analytic teams, discussion space. Okay, so for this form, a little bit different. Uh, in this case here, after your introduction, I will do my best to split everybody up into groups, into teams, um, based off of your skills and your life experiences and uh, what you might have as insight into this course. Each team will be, of course, at least five members. Um, probably most of the teams will be greater than five members just to allow for uh, some potential attrition in our class uh, in our class list. If you have more than five members, uh, you just need to either cycle through these between yourselves, each taking a turn, or add additional roles. That is, amongst yourselves, you need to pick one of you in the group to become a proponent, a critic, an example giver, a summarizer, and a questioner. And for that week's content, you will just go and kind of create a short paragraph or a few points on the topic based off of your role. As a team, you'll communicate amongst yourselves as to who's doing what role for what week. And then once you've done that, this is just your discussion space. Five teams all together. Each of you will have your own discussion space that you can post to and read. So just a way for you guys to meet. Of course, if as a team you decide you want to meet through an external source, that is perfectly fine to do as well. Uh, to collapse this, once you've discussed that week's uh, content for your proponent, critic, example, summarization, and question, uh, you'd put that together and you would post that in your weekly analysis. So you would have week two, week three, week four, on and on and on, and you would just post your analysis of that previous week in this. And those just, hey, what you did as a team, post it there for everybody else to see. And that just also allows you to kind of take a look at what everybody else came up with for an analysis for that week. Uh, one of the big things you'll notice on this and really all the threads is that it will say you must start a thread before you can read and reply to others. So that is, it will look initially just like this, where there's nothing there until you make your post. Once you make your post, you might realize that you were the last team to post, which is fine. And you can then go through and take a look at what everybody else had already posted. So altogether, we have five weeks worth of analytic team posting to be done. Back up to the top, carrying on. So we've taken a look at discussions. Next, we have assignments. 
Underneath this assignments tab, we have two categories. We have a term paper, which is due at the end of the semester, and we have a cost benefit analysis, which is due about halfway through. If you click on either one of these, it'll open it up. It'll give you the assignment instructions as well as the rubric as to how it will be graded. Let's take a look at the cost benefit analysis here. So here we have the instructions. So kind of just the overview as to what's going on. Uh, feel free to read that yourself. One of the big things just to bring to note with it though is that it's a two-part assignment. The same can be said for the term paper as well. Part one is the assignment itself, so our cost benefit analysis. Part two is the self-assessment. So that is for part two, what you're going to do is you're going to just going to scroll down here. Here's our rubric for the cost benefit analysis. You're going to go and take a look at this rubric and assess your own cost benefit. You're going to write a short little blurb, maximum three pages, justifying why you've given yourself the mark you have and why you deserve to be awarded that grade. And then from that, I will review your justification and assign a mark accordingly, and then also grade your self-assessment based off of its own. So keep that in mind, both the term paper and the cost benefit analysis also require a self-assessment, and this just helps to facilitate some reflection. If you want to evaluate the rubric separately, we also have our rubrics tab. Underneath the rubrics tab, you'll notice we have four rubrics altogether. You have the rubric for your cost benefit analysis, the rubric for your term paper, which we could also find through the assignments, but we also have a rubric for your discussions. So this is your weekly discussion post, as well as the analytic team's weekly discussion post. So if you want to take a look at how exactly I'm marking that, what I'm weighting your grades against, really that's always a good idea so that you can write to the rubric, that is write to get the highest grade you can. Feel free to take a look at these rubrics and get an idea. Carrying on along the top, next tab is Collaborate. This here is just a virtual meeting room. This would be like our Microsoft Teams or like Zoom or any of those virtual meeting rooms that have developed. This is just our in house version in D2L. So if ever you're having trouble with content or you just want to chat about something to do with the course or what have you, we can always meet up in this room and work through. So that's available to us. Uh, just to add to that, it doesn't need to be me that launches this. If as a team, right, we talked that you have these analytic teams. If as a team you want to log in and meet virtually, this Collaborate Room is also available to you. At any point, you can just click on it. You can go join Course Room and you will join in. And everybody who's a part of it on your team will have access. Carrying on, grades. This is where everyone's always interested. How is my grade to be determined? Uh, your grade is, well, split up between all the different parts that we've already discussed, but what are the weightings? First, your weekly discussions, so that's just more or less your participation. That is 30% of your total grade. Carrying down, your analytic team discussions, those analytic team, that your group assignment discussions there, there are farther 30. So altogether, 60% of your final grade being determined just by your weekly posts. Carrying on farther down, you'll have your term paper and self-assessment due at the end of the semester, and that's worth 25%, and you have your cost-benefit analysis and self-assessment. This is also due at the end of the semester, and it is worth 15 uh, With that said, both the term paper and the cost-benefit are due at the end of the semester. I have a point in the checklist where I really highlight you should, as in I really strongly recommend, that you complete the cost-benefit analysis by this date. And that there just allows you to have that breathing room to then focus on the paper, not have everything pile up at the end. That date as well works out to be the point where we skip over week four in our weekly discussion, providing you that little bit of reprieve to shift your focus to this. Final aspect along the toolbar is content. If we go over to content, this is just where little documents and the like are going to be posted. Underneath this, starting off with the table of contents, it just goes through all the stuff that's posted. So we have our syllabus, our textbook, an example of the cost benefit. So that cost benefit assignment that you're given, this would be an example of not the report that you do for the cost benefit, but as to how the cost benefit could be done. And then I also have a little bit here about our speaker series. Uh, again, that was referenced at the start. 
uh, feel free to take a look at that in that news, uh, the bottom of that wall of text, official news item on the front page. Of uh, big interest to us, though, is going to be the syllabus. So to take a look at the syllabus, let's go and launch that. And more or less, the syllabus, this is our contract as to how we're going to go and proceed throughout the semester. So we have Padam 230, winter 2022, free credits, and delivery is online. As we carry down, you have myself as your instructor, you have my email address, my office if you are on campus and wanting to buy and visit, and office hours, in this case being an online course, I'm willing to hold office hours by request. And of course, I'm just happy to answer things by email, but if you want to meet up, we can always make use of that collaborate room. Carrying on, we have our calendar description of our PADM course, as well as the prerequisites. No co-requisites, no exclusion. And then we have our three learning. Carrying on forward, required and recommended preparation, materials, and information. I say right here, hey, all material for this course is available on. I provided it all for you. If you wanted to, one of the places, uh, one of the texts that's probably best fitting to the course, but really beyond the scope of our course, it goes in a lot farther detail than we're pro, would be Public Finance in Canada, 5th Canadian Edition by Rosen et al. Additionally, of course, you're going to need access to a computer. A uh, fact you're watching this video or the fact that you've been able to access the syllabus so far shows that this is the case. Awesome. Our course schedule. Uh, our course schedule is week one. We're going to talk about intro and role of government. We're then going to work into welfare economics and evaluating private person goods. From here, we'll go and take a look at the economic for the economic rationale for government provision of selected services. That is a cost benefit analysis, and then planning, budgeting, and reporting. Comparing different budget systems. Sources of major government revenues, where do government revenues come from, uh, major government programs, and then we'll wrap up in week seven. Again, no content covered there to give you a bit of a reprieve in order to finish up your term paper and everything. Let's do it. The optional chapter readings, these are the optional chapter readings as the chapters kind of fit to this Public Finance in Canada book. The textbook for this course that I've provided. It just goes through in our order. Section one covers week one. Section two covers week. For our final exam period, there's no final exam for our course. All we have instead is that term paper due at the end of the last week. Hearing on, we have our evaluation of learning, which we already took a look at through our D2L site, but we see it again laid out for us in this way. A little bit different, it's saying that, hey, the term paper is 20 instead of 25%, and the cost benefit is 10 instead of 15. That's because in this case here, we have separated out the self-assessments to be 10%. Where on D2L, they were attached as 5%, 5% to each one. Finally, you have school or departmental information. Uh, APA formatting for all assignments, uh, it does behoove you to figure out what that means and to ensure that APA formatting is upheld as you go through all your assignments. Uh, it's a lousy way to lose a few marks, so make sure that is good. And of course, you can find the citation guides and all the APA style guide through our library through the links presented here. Outside of that, the rest of this is student responsibilities and support services available to you. Uh, great read, great bit of information, and good number of resources available to you, and excellent bits for you to take advantage of if needed. And of course, wrapping up the last bit with a bunch of school policies, academic integrity, progress, withdrawals, grading policies, review and appeals, et cetera, et cetera. A uh, big part there, mandatory attendance for first class meeting of each course. This here, if you fail to attend the first bit of the class, you will be forcibly removed. Uh, I say that really just means that you'll be de-enrolled and be made room for somebody in the wait list. How does that work for us? We don't actually have a class. We don't actually have a set meeting time. Uh, in our context, if you fail to post an introduction by the end of the first week, It'll be presumed that you enrolled in this class in air and do not actually intend to take it. Uh, carrying on, just more information about school policies, and uh, that wraps us up. Let's jump over back to D. 
that does us for our overview of D2L, of the website, and of what to expect for this semester. Should you have any questions on anything we've covered here, anything pertaining to the course, or really just anything at all, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can post just in that general posting underneath the discussion board, or you can, of course, feel free to send me an email. Thanks. Until next time.